Hey everyone, Zayf here and welcome to Ziggy's Cosmic Adventures Overview. There might be some background noise in the video cause there is some construction going on since like one month already. Like I can barely sleep here if you can tell. <laughs> so it's just my energy levels and tolerance for stuff is on a very low level recently. <laughs> So Ziggy's Cosmic Adventures is a cockpit space game where, depending on your perspective, you steal or borrow the ship from the hangar, not knowing that inside there is a very rare treasure that the evil empire is searching for and your task is to defend yourself and your little green companion. Now it's nice to see what's going on and the gameplay in the trailer, cause in mine I never even left the hangar and I have no idea for how long the tutorial would still last. It was like literally the longest introduction I've ever seen and I don't have that much to judge on cause I would have to play like an hour or something to grasp what's going on in this game. Overall from what I've seen and interacted in the cockpit it's essentially a room scale experience with switching the panels and repairing different modules, crafting items. Initially it was pretty hard to find where's what since there's so much stuff there but then it became intuitive and it wasn't really a struggle. In terms of the visuals there was a weird correlation between the ship and the outside cause the interior would be much lower quality from what you see through the front view which is kind of unusual. <laughs> also because there's some physics going on Ziggy's kind of get wild and crazy especially on the floor like I don't think it's an intended feature where they just stretch blink and mutilate in the environment. I wouldn't say this is something necessarily for me, though it's nice to see in the trailer that it's a space game where you actually fly and make weaponry inside then eject it into space. So it's kind of like you're a part of the ship and everything needs to work in harmony in order to succeed. It sucks the introduction was so long that I couldn't even go to the main gameplay though. That's just the dev's decision and I have to follow through it. <laughs> Let's meet some Ziggies. There's an arcade mode and... An adventure. I don't know the defense, but let's just go with this. Yeah. Welcome, pilot. Are you ready to experience the thrill of spaceflight and an incredible journey through the cosmos? We will go on so many adventures together, it will be incredible. But wait, why is it so dark in here? I think I need to upgrade the audio because it's very quiet. No, that won't do. Can't fly a ship in the dark. Can't adventure if you can't see where you're going. If you could, could you please pick up that battery on the counter? Great. Next, could you insert it into the light system? It's a room sky game. <laughs> into what? Uh, I don't know what's going on. I also don't see anything like... Could you insert the battery into the light system? But where is it? I feel like I'm blind or something. <laughs> Insert the battery into the light system, please. Much better. Now you can see what you're doing. You should now see the floating personalized assistant ledger in front of you. Please enter your unlock code to begin the startup sequence. Weirdly enough, the cockpit is kind of uh, low quality, but the environment outside is good. Like. Why? <laughs> huh? Error. Code not recognized. You wouldn't be stealing me, would you? Oh dear. Oh no, I'm being stolen? Reporting to the authorities. Uploading theft report. Progress at 10%. 30%. 80%. Error. 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 
external communications offline, too many issues detected with ship systems, booting internal defenses, error, error, operating subroutines offline, attempting to repair the problem, error, a system error has occurred, do you want to reinstall the AI operating system? Who is this voiceover? An unknown error has occurred. Proceeding to reinstall the AI system. Initializing new user startup sequence. Welcome! I am Pal, your personal artificial life form. It is my pleasure to meet you. One moment while I bind your user ID to my systems. Installing custom personality subroutines. Beep, boop, boop, beep, 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 boop. Complete! You are now my designated captain. And who is this little green guy? Is he your companion? I like the look of him. He looks very friendly. What's its name? I can't find anything in my memory banks about such a creature. Oh well, no worries. I'll name it 5ABA07 for now. Hello little 5ABA07. What the? Now that we got our introductions out of the way, I will be assisting you with getting to know your new ship. Please take a moment to review all systems as stated in the terms and conditions of your purchase. Preset environmental parameters for your species were loaded upon your entry as well as language and personality subroutines. Now, if you take a look around you, you will see state-of-the-art installations. These are all brand new systems that... Wait, why is everything throwing up errors? <laughs> These are all brand new systems that... Wait, I'm reading multiple critical errors. Almost all of the ship's systems are currently out of commission. How could this have happened? It looks like the last pilot must have taken quite a bit of damage. I'm sorry you have to see the ship in this state, Captain. Really, I'm quite embarrassed. I would have cleaned up if I knew you were coming over. We won't be going on any adventures until we fix up the ship. If you look around, you should be able to find the repair hammer. It's big and blue. Looks like a hammer. You know what a hammer looks like, right? Check the drawers and shelves below. The harder you hit something, the more it is repaired. Don't ask how it works. The physics behind percussive maintenance is exceedingly complicated. Give it a go and repair the damaged components throughout the ship. <laughs> That's one way to do it. Look for anything that is sparking. That means it's broken. That solves the mechanical issues. If something else breaks in the future, remember to use the hammer. But it's pretty smoky in here. Seems those components gave off quite a bit of toxic gas. You should probably vent that gas. I assume it's not good for your species. There is a switch near the back right of the cockpit that turns on the fans. Give it a flip to clear out the air. <laughs> I'm gonna be just busy with him here. I better listen to him because for some reason it's very quiet and not that interesting, like, with all due to respect. Just remind me what to do. <laughs> Turn on the fans. Flip the switch to turn on the fans. Yeah, where is it? I'll be just flipping everything. Jesus. Fantastic, that settles the repairs. Now, if we want to get out of here, we need to power up the ship, as we are currently going nowhere on empty. This ship is outfitted with a cutting edge, next generation prototype matter generator and extractor system. Top scientists are working on cracking the code to unlimited energy. And this is their prototype system. Anything from a plant to a complex processed creation like a burger, fries and shakes. The extractor on the other side is able to take organic matter and extract its essence into a pure fuel source. Let's create something with the generator. There should be a green standard issue data cartridge that comes with all ships of this class. That's the green data cartridge used for fueling the ship. However, it looks a bit strange. That cartridge is not standard issue. 
That one looks like a master data cartridge. Something is written on the data cartridge you used. It says, Ziggy. That shouldn't be in here. That belongs in the research vault. Without it, the research team will be unable to continue their work. I wonder how it got in here. Well, I'm sure you can return it later. Let's try out that cartridge. Put it into the matter generator. There's so many stuff here that's just hard to find anything. <laughs> Most of the gameplay is just gonna be searching. We need to find the green data cartridge. It's here. Now press the button at the bottom of the matter generator to start the creation process. The matter generator is in progress. Wow, we got another of those creatures. Hello, little one. I guess its name isn't 5AB07 after all. Those creatures must be named Ziggy. That's what was written on that cartridge. Hmm, I have an idea. The extractor system works by taking organic matter and compressing it into a usable fuel source. Now that we have multiple of these Ziggy creatures, we can probably use them as a fuel source. Let's put a Ziggy in the extractor. On the opposite side of the cockpit from the matter generator, you'll find the extractor. Open the extractor door first, then take that new Ziggy and then place it into the extractor. I can't wait to see what you're making. Why would I kill him? <laughs> Close the extractor door. That's mean. Next, we need to add an empty fuel canister into the transfer dock. There is an empty battery cell in the engine power unit. Let's take one from there. If you press the red button on the battery, it will pop out. It's alive! There's something wrong with the physics on the bottom that... A spare battery could come in handy. I hope you are making something useful. The new battery is ready. Take a battery out of the engine power unit. The matter generator is in progress. We've got a new battery in the matter generator. Reduce, reuse, recycle. We have plenty already. Maybe try reusing an existing one. But like it's the limit of the objects I'm assuming. Because it's 6 plus 2. Great. Now place the battery in the transfer dock area and watch the miracle of science taking place before your eyes. Hooray! We've got a full battery, and Ziggy is still alive. Looks like he is a very dense fuel source. Let's put that battery into one of the engine slots. What the hell? That has added some fuel to the ship and should give us enough power to get out of here. However, that's not what we need to do. In order to survive out in space, we need to make sure that the life support system is working. Otherwise, oxygen won't be created. I believe your species relies heavily on oxygen, so I suggest we fix this before we set out. The life support system is out of power right now. We could extract the Ziggy again. But if you want to extract that city again into another battery, I am fearful that it may lead to its demise. Life forms can only expend so much energy before they are depleted. If you were to feed Ziggy something, however, that would give Ziggy more energy and therefore allow another extraction. However, if you don't care, you could also just put another battery from the life support unit into the dock and get more energy from Ziggy. It's up to you. 
It may kill Ziggy, though. There should be a standard issue food cartridge. It's yellow. Can you locate it? I'm not killing anyone here. Great. That is a food cartridge. A staple of any pilot's ship for long jo Now press the start button to create some food. That looks tasty. I'm sure Ziggy would love that. Hold that food in front of the tired Ziggy. If Ziggy needs energy, it will surely eat that right up. Okay, yeah, that works. I hope you were making something useful. Looks like that did the trick. Ziggy looks happy and full again. Now we can extract Ziggy once more. We will need another battery. There is one in the life support system. Please take it out of there and insert it into the charging dock. They're going crazy. Dinner served. Ziggy's back to full energy. So, what's the goal? Because I was doing the batteries. Take the battery from the life support system and place it in the charging dock. I hope Ziggy doesn't hit us. Have another full battery. Place it into the life support system. Time to eat. <laughs> Ziggy looks like he's full of energy. Maybe one will just stay here and be used. <laughs> Since the life support system was without power for too long, the system will need to be rebooted. Follow the on-screen sequence to reset the life support system. Well, I need a call, yeah? Fantastic! That's that. The system is powered up and rebooted. Now you'll have oxygen when we travel into space. Now that you've found the marker, push the cylinder unit into the wall. Now we're on the second stage. Repeat the same process again. Find the next marker. Okay. <laughs> That's it. The pressure is reset. Moving on, there are several sliders above the pressure system. These are all out of balance. These sliders help the life support system be more efficient. So, if you want to maximize the battery use in your life support, make sure to balance these. Move the sliders until they all align with the green marks. Keeping them well balanced will also help slow the energy use of the life support battery. These may get jostled around from time to time and may need recalibrating, so keep an eye on them. It is not necessary to always keep these balanced, especially if pressed for time, but it will make your journey easier. Next up, there is a thermal regulator unit on under the extractor. It's a bit out of balance right now, which means that the ship will start to cool down rapidly when we leave the atmosphere of this hangar. If you spin the wheel on the front of the unit, you can rebalance the temperature of the cockpit. Set the bar to the center of the temperature gauge. It's just searching for stuff here. On this. <laughs> Turn the wheel on the thermal regulator unit. Great, the temperature is set to something more comfortable. The temperature of the cockpit be affected in various ways. It may become slightly warmer if you overheat the ship's guns and vent the heat into the cockpit. If the ship is extremely hot, systems may become more prone to taking damage, which would necessitate the use of the repair hammer more frequently. On the other hand, the ship can also become colder if you eject objects out of the rear of the ship. It may also be affected by our location in space, as it's pretty cold out there. If the ship becomes frozen over, you may find that the ship may be more difficult to control. On top of all that, your species is quite dependent on a relatively narrow window of temperatures for survival, so you need to find a good balance that suits you. Definitely keep an eye on that unit from time to time. We are almost done. 
In order to fly out of here, we need the stabilizer to keep our trajectory steady. Without it, the ship will be impossible to control. This system also maintains the artificial gravity, although you can disable it manually if you so desire. The stabilizer unit is located at the back of the cockpit, below the eject door. Once you locate the stabilizer, grab the dials on each side of the stabilizer. Push in the stabilizer. Fantastic work! We're now more stable than a barn! Oh, it looks like someone is calling us. I'll patch them through. Well, I have to finish here. Jesus Christ, this is like the longest tutorial ever. <laughs> I mean, there's not much to say really because we didn't even flew in space, but from what I see, this is like a cockpit simulator with a lot of controls. I mean, initially it's hard to find stuff, but then I think it's gonna be pretty easy with the locations. Like, it doesn't seem overly complicated, it's just at the start it's hard to find worse what. I don't really know what's gonna be past this, but judging from this section, it's not necessarily something for me. From the technical things, I think the cockpit could be better quality and something's up with Ziggy's and the floor, like they get messy <laughs> and the physics are just all over the place. Also the default audio can be regulated more, but I think overall it's pretty neat for what it is. I would just have to play it for like an hour to actually get to the game, I suppose. Oh, also the voiceover is kind of boring, but maybe that's just me and I was more interested to play with Ziggy's rather than listening to him. 